Welcome back to another video. If you've ever worked with audio that has different audio levels and you're not really sure about the best approach to fix those audio levels so that they all sound consistent, that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video, how to control audio levels using a compressor inside Premiere Pro CC. All right, I have Premiere Pro open here with a file I've pre-recorded. The first part is me talking fairly close to the mic and the second part is when I talk further away from the mic. So I'll give you guys a listen so you know what we're working with before we start the tutorial. And I want you to pay attention to where the levels hit on the audio meter because this will help you figure out what levels to input into your compressor. This is an audio test where I'm speaking very close to the mic. And this is an audio test where I'm speaking pretty far from the mic. So as you can tell, the first part is around minus six, and the next part is below minus 18. So there's a pretty big gap between those two audio levels. And of course, you could split the clip and then simply increase the gain on the second clip of let's say 13 higher to get it similar in volume. And while this works very efficiently for just two clips, if you had a whole bunch of audio or just one continuous take, it would take you quite a long time to do that. And it's always good to know various techniques when you're editing because then you can choose the best workflow for the editing project you're working on. Let's go ahead and undo. Let's go up to the effects panel window and then type in dynamics. And then under the amplitude and compression folder, let's drag down dynamics onto our file. Alternatively, if you wanna use a compressor on your entire track, you can go to the audio track mixer, click the little arrow up here, and then in the top section here for inserts, you can then add the dynamics effect for the entire track. Since I'm just working with one audio file, we'll just apply the dynamics effect to this single file. In effect controls, we'll go to edit, and then we'll change some settings in the compressor tab. So let's go ahead and enable that. And then we saw before that our first audio was sitting around minus six, and then our next audio was setting around uh, minus 18 or so. So the goal of what we're trying to do today in this tutorial with this compressor is in order to raise the lower parts of the volume, we need to bring down the higher parts. So we're gonna use a compressor to lower the loud parts, and then we can use the makeup setting in the compressor to bring up the quieter part. First, we have our threshold. This is essentially a number that we input into the compressor to tell it to engage or not engage. Anything above minus 20 will start to be compressed or lowered in gain for this example. Then we have our ratio, which is how much the compressor will actually compress. So right now we have a one ratio, which is a one to one, and that essentially means you're not gonna compress really at all. It will just raise the volume, but not really compress the audio and control it. If you set it to, let's say, two, that will be a two to one, and that will start to introduce some compression into your audio. You could go up to three or four, and I, but I wouldn't go too much more than that for dialogue, for people's voices, as then it could start sounding unnatural. If you're working with a drum track, for example, then you could go a lot higher than that to get a nice punchy uh, snare or kick drum sound. But again, if you're just working with audio, you wanna make sure that your ratios are kept quite low. Then we have our attack and release, which is how quick the effect comes into play and then over how long it is released. Typically, I'll keep those to default, but if you did wanna get an average or starting point, you can go up to the presets and you can go to a medium or soft compression. So let's go to soft and you'll see that it has a 1.9 uh, to one ratio, minus 12, one and 50, and then with a makeup of 3.3. The makeup is essentially adding gain or volume to your audio track to make up for the lower volume that was caused in starting to uh, use the compressor. So let's go back to default, turn our compressor on, set this to around two. We'll start off with keeping the threshold around minus 20, and then add a makeup of about seven decibels. Now let's give it a listen to see if that did anything to our audio. And again, pay attention to the audio meters of where each level sits. This is an audio test where I'm speaking very close to the mic. And this is an audio test where I'm speaking pretty far from the mic. The first audio sounds a little more compressed, but ultimately it's staying around minus six. But then did you notice that the second audio was no longer below minus 18, it was actually sitting closer to like minus 12. And that's because of our makeup gain of around seven decibels. To exaggerate that, let's go to 15. This is an audio test where I'm speaking very close to the mic. And this is an audio test where I'm speaking pretty far from the mic. 
With a makeup of 15 decibels, you saw that the first part of the audio was peaking. This is an audio test where I'm speaking very, but our second part was pretty much exactly where we want it. So now that you're starting to understand how the different inputs can affect your audio, let's go ahead and start fine tuning these settings. And I should note that it's pretty common to have different compressor settings every time you work with a compressor, just because of the nature of how audio works in different environments. Let's change our ratio up to three. Let's change our threshold to minus 30. And then we'll give that a listen. This is an audio test where I'm speaking very close to the mic. And this is an audio test where I'm speaking pretty far from the mic. Okay, now that our levels are getting pretty close, we can adjust the overall makeup. And I'd be careful with raising this too much because the higher you raise the overall volume, the more you're also raising the noise floor in your audio. And that means you might hear a lot more background noise or hiss in your recordings. Okay, so with it set to 20, let's listen to this. This is an audio test where I'm speaking very close to the mic. And this is an audio test where I'm speaking pretty far from the mic. I think that's sounding pretty good. Let's turn it off for a sec and I'll show you the difference of where we started. This is an audio test where I'm speaking very close to the mic. And this is an audio test where I'm speaking pretty far from the mic. This is an audio test where I'm speaking very close to the mic. And this is an audio test where I'm speaking pretty far from the mic. So as you heard, it makes a pretty big difference working with a compressor to level audio, but you also may have heard how compressed the voice ended up being. So if you find your voice being too compressed working with this way and you're not a fan of how it sounds, then you might have to go with the other way, which would be to manually use the pen tool, or like I said before, split up the track and then adjust the gain individually. But overall, the compressor can be a great tool to know to level your audio fairly quickly and automatically after entering in just a few settings. Now beyond that, if you wanna raise the makeup gain of your audio even more so that it's more compressed, you can absolutely do that. But again, it's going to affect the audio and beyond that, you might introduce some peaking into your audio. You can get around the peaking by adding a limiter and setting it to, you know, minus one or minus two, for example. But I find the limiter in Premiere doesn't really sound too great. And if you watch one of our other tutorials on how to prevent peaking in audio, you'll see that I use another plugin to do that. So check out that video if you're interested. Okay, I hope this video was helpful on how to level audio using a compressor inside Premiere Pro. We have a ton of other filmmaking tutorials on this channel if you wanna learn more from us. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe for more videos from us in the future. We'll see you next time.